2020, the year in modern history when humanity faced great challenges, yet came together and made sacrifices to overcome and, wait, no, nope, never mind, murder hornets. That's right, just when you thought 2020 couldn't get any worse. Back now with what's called murder hornets, reported in the US for the first time. These giant wasps from Asia have made their way to North America, and entomologists are up in arms over how to protect us and our bees. So let's dive in on today's nutty history, murder hornets. Whether you love hearing about murder wasps murdering or want to know how to buy a tiger, tiger. Nutty History is bringing you all the crazy facts. So if you want to keep getting the latest buzz and love our content, oh, I love it. Hit like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Now, murder hornets sound nasty, and they are nasty. It's the rare case where the bark is just as bad as the bite. Murder hornets have one of the most painful stings on Earth. They kill nearly 50 people a year in their native Japan, and they prey on honeybees. Our bees pollinate a third of U.S. crops, a hugely important part of the food supply chain that contributes an estimated $15 billion in value to the agriculture industry. They have already faced years of declining populations, with pesticides and climate change cited as possible causes. Oh, and our European honeybees have exactly zero defenses against the murder hornets. These things are just like something out of a real-life horror movie. Take a look at the injuries suffered by some of their victims. The venom in their stingers kills the skin cells around the penetration point, leaving deep holes in the victim's skin. These look more like bullet holes than stings. You just got shot up by the murder hornets. Murder hornets are the world's largest species of wasp. Roughly five times the size of a bee. Their scientific name is Vespa mandarinia, not to be confused with Vespa scooter. Murder hornets are also known as Asian giant hornets, Japanese giant hornets, suzumebachi, meaning the sparrow wasp in Japanese, and even yak killer hornets, because they hate the song Yakety Sax. But no matter what they're called, they're always bad news. They're not called murder hornets for no reason, or because they just have a bad PR Okay, team. it's a PR nightmare. These little nasties are lethal. In Japan, where they originate, they reportedly kill up to 50 people a year. And for people that are stung in no lethal manner, the pain from a murder hornet's sting is the worst of all bees and wasps. While murder hornets look scary as heck, are super aggressive toward anyone coming near their hive, and are responsible for plenty of human deaths. The biggest concern raised by their sudden appearance in North America is for our local bee population. Murder hornets get their name for how they murder and devour other insects, especially bees. Murder hornets use their large, sharp mandibles or claws or grabber thingies to wrap around a bee's throat and decapitate it. Once the murder hornet pops the poor little bee's head clean off of its body, it chews and mashes the muscular portions of the bee's thorax into meatball and flies it back to the nest to feed it to the larvae. So their super aggressive nature combined with a horribly painful sting added to killing a high number of humans for an insect, plus the whole decapitating bees and chewing their bodies into a ball thing, they could have wound up with way worse names than murder hornets. On December 8, 2019, a resident of Blaine, Washington reported finding a large dead hornet on his property. The Washington State Department of Agriculture identified this specimen as Vespa larvae, a murder hornet, and the National Identification Services confirmed the ID this year. Now that the hornet has been confirmed, we're hearing about its presence. This is the first time a murder hornet has been identified in the United States, but not the first time one has appeared in North America. In September 2019, in Nanaimo on Vancouver Island, British Columbia, a whole nest was discovered. The reason murder hornets worry North American entomologists and beekeepers so much is because our bees are helpless against them. Other types of wasp usually hunt alone, but murder hornets will actually organize mass attacks against beehives. They recognize the value of teamwork. This is called a slaughter. During a slaughter event, hornets quickly kill thousands of honeybees. One hornet will find a honeybee hive and secrete a hormone with its back leg, signaling other hornets to attack. And then, one hornet can kill 300 honeybees in an hour. 
In fact, one hornet can kill one bee every 14 seconds. Ugh, this sounds like the honeybee equivalent of the beginning of Saving Private Ryan. Murder hornets don't just go after bees. These predators gorge themselves on other insects as well, such as praying mantises. And that's how insect MMA became the most popular sport during the 2020 quarantine. Why are entomologists racing against the clock to learn how widespread the invaders are and to isolate and destroy the invasive populations before the hornets become so numerous that they settle in for good? What's the big deal? Well, for one, bees are critical to our food supply and pollinate one in three items we eat. And also, no one knows how they got here. They may have stowed away in international shipping containers or been smuggled over as food or medicine. There's theories out there, but no one is sure. And another cause for concern is the Pacific Northwest where they were found is the exact perfect climate for them. They are native to Asia and appear in China, India, Bhutan, Japan, Korea, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Nepal, Russia, Taiwan, and Thailand. So if you're planning your murder wasp tour, there's your oh, itinerary. Hell no. The murder hornets generally make their homes in underground tunnels, much like chuds. Now, there are a lot of people that say chuds aren't real and that there's no such thing as cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers. Well, with the way 2020 has been going so far, I'm not going to take any chances. Humanoid underground so dwellers. as I was saying, murder hornets make their homes underground usually taking advantage of tunnels already built by snakes, various rodents, or chuds. Nests consist of cells, interlocking chambers for larval development, and are constructed from chewed bits of wood fibers harvested from living trees or decaying wood. The average colony will produce about 212 males and 205 new queens. Those queens will try to go on and make their very own nests. So you see, once they dig in somewhere, it's hard to get them out. Now let's talk about those stingers. And I don't mean the stinger splash. Oh, another stinger splash. A murder hornet stinger is about a quarter of an inch long. When engaged, the stinger injects a complex enzyme mixture that destroys tissue. That is similar to other wasps, but due to its size, it can kill the skin and leave a deep hole around the sting. What is unique in their sting is a neurotoxin that shuts down the nervous system. And unlike bees, wasps can use their stingers multiple times, latching onto a person and stinging again and again. One sting is enough to send an allergic person into anaphylactic shock. For a non-allergic person, anything over 10 stings should be considered a medical emergency. As we talked about earlier, the sting of a murder hornet is one of the worst imaginable. Masato Ono, an entomologist at Tamagawa University near Tokyo, told National Geographic in 2002 about his experience being stung and described it as, like a hot nail through my leg. And that was one sting. Another sting victim, YouTube star Coyote Peterson of the Brave Wilderness Channel, Go YouTube Stars, allowed a murder hornet to sting him back in 2018. In his description of the sting, it feels like a red hot fire poker that's been sitting in the embers and it's been shoved into your arm. And you can't remove it. And that pain doesn't just hit you for a couple of seconds and go away. It actually escalates. No relief yet. Wow. So now that you've heard how it feels, the last thing you want to do is get stung. No one wants to wind up like Nicolas Cage in Wicker Man. Not the bees! Maybe no one wants to end up like Nick Cage, period. So what do you do if you're attacked? Everyone reacts differently to stings and people can become allergic at any time. So there's no set answers. This is one of the most venomous insects in the world. In past murder hornet related deaths, the average number of stings for a fatality was about 59. If you stumble on an angry nest of thousands of hornets, each capable of multiple stings, 59 is a scary low number. The best protection you can have against murder hornets is to stay away from their nests. If you do accidentally disturb a nest and you run, they will chase you, and they will chase you for a long time. If you can't outrun them, unfortunately, the best strategy is to crouch and cover your head and try not to move. These attacks are gruesome, painful, and sad. 
And of course, since these things are capable of killing you, there are some people out there that want to eat them. Oh, hell no. Hachinoko, or wasp larva, is a snack in central Japan's Nagano and Gifu prefectures. Regional restaurants serve it up on more traditional menus and some stores even selling the larva in a can. You can definitely find this tree every November 3rd in the village of Kushihada in Gifu. That's the day of Heibo Matsudi, an annual festival devoted to all things wasp related. The wasp treats include the traditional Hachinoko Gohan, a preparation of larva with steamed rice. The most popular offering is Gohei Machi, consisting of grilled sticky rice coated in a blend of soy sauce, sugar, ground peanuts, and crushed wasp larva. The savory, sweet, and smoky snack is served on a skewer. The murder hornet's bodies are light and crunchy and leave a warming, tingling sensation when eaten. So what are the chances we start eating them here in the U.S. if they arrive en masse? Well, some people already are. The edible insect ambassadors at Brooklyn Bugs have shown several pretty fancy ways to prepare the pests. So have at it, everyone. Enjoy those murder hornet nachos. There's no denying that somehow, some way, murder hornets have made it to the shores of North America. Now we have to deal with it. And in case all of us working together to eat all of them doesn't work, we need to come up with a plan. Remember, it's not just about us getting stung. It's the bee population we need to worry about. We depend on our bees to pollinate our food supply, and they're defenseless against these invaders. The Japanese honeybee has been dealing with the murder hornet now for several generations and has actually adapted a way to defend themselves. Katie Prudick, an associate professor in the School of Natural Resources and the Environment at the University of Arizona, explains, Japanese honeybees have evolved an ambush defense against these hornets. When a hornet scout finds a honeybee hive, the honeybees lure her in, then collectively pounce on the hornet, beating their wings as much as they can. This flurry attack raises the temperature around the hornet, eventually killing her and a few of the honeybees closest to her. The hive will remain undiscovered to the hornet colony and live to see another day. So to put it plainly, the Japanese bees swarm it and cook it alive. In the fight between murder hornets and cook things alive bees, who truly wins? I guess the bees, right? But these Japanese bees have had years to evolve this defense mechanism. There's no telling whether or not our European honeybees would be able to adapt this technique before they are wiped out completely. Oh, this is bad. This is very bad. U.S. lawmakers are already working to create funding to deal with the possible hornet invasion as well. A coordinated government effort combined with adapting defenses from bees and a few of us developing a taste for murder hornet corn dogs may be just enough to keep these stingers at bay. If you're feeling buzzed, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Might as well like this video too, because if you don't, it'll sting. See you next time on Nutty History.